All right, this is Elliot. Today I'm going to talk about RS. And obviously, as you can see, I'm not in my room today. Um, visiting my parents, South Korea. So I'm walking at a park by myself because I got bored. But I just realized it's like freezing cold today. But anyway, like always, I'm going to talk about robotics engineering. So today I'm going to talk about RS because I do have a love and hate relationship. And that I have been kind of a coward uh, by not talking about some negative aspects of RS in my head. And that it's not like I'm right, you're wrong, that kind of story. I'm just sharing my um, casual thoughts on RS. So after this, please feel free to comment down below to share your thoughts on RS2 or RS in general as well. So as you know, RS stands for Robot Operating System. And I believe this community has been growing since like early 2000s or something like that. And then a couple of years ago, RS2 came out and, and RS2 is based on DDS data distribution service. And the philosophy of DDS is the data centric. So you implement your message protocol, data protocol, and then you can create your custom messages and then you can even like uh, debug the message using a terminal like RS2, topic, echo, topic, echo, and then name of the topic list, something like that. You know what I mean? It's really, really cool. But anyways, uh, so our, our RS2 has quite a bit of advantages and then the community is just larger. A lot of uh, industry and companies are using RS2 for their products as well. Also the research groups in the universities as well. And because of this uh, community size growth, uh, there are more applications like software, like and new gazebo especially came out. Then there's a URDF that you can define your own robot there. And then uh, using this RS2 ecosystem, you can actually build the larger network of the application that you can share all this data from your robot and then from another robot to another robot if, you're, if they are using local area network or LAN. So it is obvious that RS2 has a lot of benefits. And you do want to use RS if you're like me. However, there are some downside of the exact same benefit of the RS2. It's more like a double-sided edge of RS2. And I'm talking about the, um, the data centric philosophy. So for example, if I want to develop a mobile app, say uh, using Flutter or Android or iOS, I just want to grab the data from RS2 ecosystem, but it's not straightforward compared to REST API or WebSocket. Now you may be saying that like, hey, Elliot, the REST API is more like a single time usage and then after the after getting data from the REST API, like post or get method, you can't continuously get the data, something like that. But, well, obviously you can still use UDP client or WebSocket server, I mean WebSocket client, uh, so that you can subscribe the data in real time in a continuous manner. So it's not really about REST API or DDS or something like that. You can still use UDP, even from the web browser as well. So that's not the point I'm talking about. For example, the RS2 based messages are really embedded in this RS2 ecosystem. And then you cannot just, you know, grab the data from this ecosystem. Unlike Rust API, if you know this server URL and port number, you can always grab the data uh, without any other uh, package installation or anything else. I mean, that's, that's all you need, right? But when it comes to RS2, you really need to install or do something about RS2 installation because RS is not just a um, package or API, but instead it's more like an ecosystem. So I'm like, if RS2 is a tool, what kind of tool requires me to follow its rule? If it is a tool, it should serve me, my app, and then I should get out of my way, right? So that's something that I don't like about RS2. Now, <laughs> please don't hate me. I still use RS, but please do comment down below how you handle this kind of situation. And then I have a kind of impression that people think RS2 packages are more like MPM or PIP, the Python packages that they can just download packages and then they can implement their robot software. However, when it comes to robotics, uh, another uh, 
sort of barrier or downside of robotics in general is that it's not like a website development because when it comes to robot, it's not even, I mean, it is even worse than this um, Android or mobile application development because when it comes to Android, iOS, the hardware is specific. You know, it's already set there. And then Android operating system, for example, uh, provides a bunch of predefined APIs by this operating system. So you don't have to really worry too much about it. So you can use uh, this NPM, or I mean, not NPM, what is what is the package names of the Flutter? Anyways, you know what I'm, the Dart. When it comes to a Flutter application, you can just download this, um, this packages for the Flutter development that you can do whatever you want to do. But when it comes to robots in general, they don't have any specific form and then RS is not really an operating system. When it comes to operating system, the operating system should be able to, you know, handle all these RAM space, like RAM memory resources and CPU, all that. But RS is not doing any of those. So it's a good name to say um, robot operating system, but it's not really, really an operating system by definition. Also, um, when it comes to robots, they come with all these, all these different hardware specification. Like some robots are like literally a drone, some robots are like robot docks, some robots are like cars and humanoid. They have all different hardware configurations, so it's really not uniform. So if, for example, so if you want to uh, develop, a, say, a slam algorithm, maybe like RS2, NAV2 package can do something, but if you want to mix the LiDAR sensor or cameras and like 3D LiDAR and all that, you need to actually implement the sensor feature algorithm by yourself. If you like to implement, say, RQG, like state estimation and control all together, you'd still need to implement your own sensor feature algorithm with the control algorithm together. So RS, RS2 packages doesn't really give you all this kind of uh, degree, degree of the freedom. So you still need to implement uh, this state estimation loop by yourself, you as a robotics engineer. So uh, RS2 is not like uh, NPM packages or PIP packages. I mean, at least for by today, right? Who knows, after a couple of years, there might be new tools came coming out. So um, I may be wrong, but at least today it is like that. That's my impression. Also, people are saying that RS... Also, people are saying that RS is more like a mainstream in robotics industry, and I agree with that. But when it comes to, you know, the philosophy of distributed computing, is it? That's my question. Because when it comes to distributed computing, if you look at this web development industry and then back-end engineers have already implemented all these distributed computing uh, services, and they are not idiots compared to robotics engineers. And then uh, why don't we just use this mature system in the robotics industry as well, instead of just like, you know, uh, blindly following this so-called mainstream of robotics as RS? Why don't we just mix them? And in a way, I even feel like RS2 is maybe like, you know, inventing a new wheel from the scratch instead of adopting this uh, mature web development industry, in a way, in a way. Okay, my camera gimbal's battery is gone, so I'm going to have to hold it by myself. Anyway, I'm going to have to wrap up my talk really quick. So anyway, um, I believe RS2 doesn't have to be the only way to go when you develop a uh, robotics project. So my uh, alternative way is in general is I'm using a Rabbit MQ with RS2 as well. Uh, so I actually mix them together using REST API and all that. And then if, if I also create RS2 node, I uh, implement a, a WebSocket server or UDP server there within the RS2 node so I can actually create, say, mobile app and then get the data from this mobile app. And then the downside of doing that is actually you have to implement your own separate data protocol like using flat buffers or protobuf. So I think it would be much easier if RS2 provide this message protocol or data protocol 
outside of RS2 ecosystem. And then RS2 is not really uh, flexible uh, when it comes to this issue specifically. But I don't know, if you know any other solutions, please comment down below. Or if you're doing the same, if you're doing the same, or if you do some other alternative ways, please share how you handle this issue. So today I wanted to talk about RS because people ask me how to proceed further after mastering RS. So I have talked about um, how to proceed with robotics and then roadmaps and robotics. So uh, if you're curious, please check out another link here. And then uh, if you like this kind of talk, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. This is Elliot. I'll see you soon.